Well, hello, everybody. Happy Fourth of July weekend. Uh, this is the weekly water outlook for July 6, 2014. Well, here's the precipitation over the last seven days. Uh, you can see really there's one story here as far as significant precipitation, and that's from Hurricane Arthur right here as it brushed parts of the Carolina coast. You know, some of the spiral bands did work inland, and it looked initially last week during my briefing that this would stay out just enough to keep the rain off, but some of it did move here. I'll zoom in there just a minute. But other than the precipitation from uh, Arthur, it looks like most of the region, the entire southeast U.S., was pretty quiet, just some scattered precipitation here and there. Here's the precipitation over the last seven days, and like I said, it was scattered, and sometimes you can get scattered and you can get a mix of blue and red, saying you had a little bit more widespread coverage. In this case, it was scattered and it was more few and far between, so you can see that we did have well below normal precipitation in most areas, except associated with the tropical activity. And look at this here. You can sort of see the, the band sort of streaking in here. Uh, I'm not drawing this too good, but they sort of streaked in this way. So soil moisture uh, over the last week uh, generally dried. Um, you can see there are a couple spots that did um, get a little bit wet. That's indicated in blue. But most areas it was drying over the last week. Not necessarily all that significant drying, but a bit drier soils. Now temperatures, the pattern last week, if you remember me talking about that, we have a big area of below normal temperature centered over the Midwest. Models have been forecasting cooler temperatures in June in that region and actually for the summer. And I think what we're going to see here is we're going to see a series of cold fronts come through. And this isn't just short term. I think we're looking at this is the summer pattern. And what they'll do is they'll make it most of the way through the southeast U.S. before modifying. But this is what we saw last week, cooler over much of Mississippi, Alabama, northern Georgia. And that's due to that cold air sort of pushing down from this region. And I think we're going to see that uh, several times or occasionally throughout the summer, uh, this type of pattern. Now, of course, over this region, temperatures were held down due to the tropical rainfall. Streamflow, uh, the patterns that we have right now, we have a number of patterns. Um, as far as heavy precipitation or uh, high streamflow, uh, what we have here is this is that recurring pattern of above normal streamflow, which is causing flooding on the Mississippi. We have uh, enhanced uh, streamflow due to past rainfall, but also the current tropical system. And those are the two primary high type patterns. Now, if we look at the southeast U.S., uh, this time of year, I look at vulnerabilities quite a bit. Um, generally speaking, with the exception of North Carolina uh, coastline and just inland, the rest of the southeast U.S., we have these areas of green to red or orange dots. So I'd say the vulnerability from a stream flow perspective is either normal or maybe a little bit below normal. So we're in decent shape as far as uh, most of the southeast U.S., including um, South Carolina, um, Georgia, and uh, Mississippi and Alabama uh, should a system develop in the near term. Here's a, a close-up of the southeast U.S. and you can see again the uh, yellow dots or the orange dots in red are below normal um, and really we don't see too many blue dots. You can see that the, the current um, tropical uh, didn't really have too many too much of an impact on stream flow because it was sort of hugging the coast and the individual uh, lines of precipitation spiral lines were uh, somewhat isolated. The big event, though, with stream flow, you might want to look. There is some major flooding going on on the Mississippi River. Uh, basically, we had inflows coming in here from the upper Mississippi, from Minneapolis and the Iowa tributaries, and that's resulting in major flooding almost down to just north of St. Louis. Now, I did say there was a tropical system, as you know, um, Arthur. Uh, it became a hurricane, actually briefly a, a Cat 2 hurricane there. You can see the orange right off the coast of uh, North Carolina and parts of Virginia. Um, it did stay offshore, but it did produce some precipitation as it pushed inland. And you can see here, here's a close-up. Uh, there were some pockets of three inches, um, very, very small estimate of around six inches right in this region right here. Uh, but it's very scattered. It wasn't a widespread precipitation. And as you all know, when we're talking about flooding, it's not, this is a good example, it's not so much the point values, it's the widespread nature. And you look at Greenville, not much rain at Greenville at all, but then around Kinston, um, up towards Tarboro, much heavier precipitation. So it's not widespread at all uh, with this type of event. So the jet stream uh, this week, 
it looks very similar to last week. Uh, actually, the last two weeks, we have this upper dip in the jet stream to our north. And what that's going to do is bring a weak cold front down into the southeast U.S. latter part of the week. I put the outlook for late Wednesday there in the insert. And that's going to be the focus. So until that comes through, it's going to be relatively dry, uh, near normal type summer weather, a bit on the warm side early ahead of that front. Um, and then once that front passes through, it's going to dry things out and cool off temperatures. But that'll be the latter part of the week, and there will be some scattered showers and thunderstorms as that goes through. We're really in the summertime pattern. Now, it'd even be a little bit quieter if this jet stream wasn't further off to the north. Um, but what you can see, there's no shading down here in the southeast, and that's saying the jet stream is pretty much where it should be um, this time of year. But it's just enough of a dip in this jet stream here to push this front through, and that will give us a chance of more active showers and thunderstorms the latter part of the week. So here's your precipitation forecast. This is your typical summertime, you know, sort of a blanket type uh, rainfall forecast. Now the models are hinting at uh, some tropical moisture, uh, not a tropical system, but tropical moisture interaction here. So along the coast, we could have some enhanced precipitation as that front comes through later in the week. Okay, so let's just look ahead like I always do. Just look at if there are any strong anomalies, I always want to give you a couple weeks heads up if I do see that. So here's this week, and you can see uh, there is a lot of yellow, and that's saying even with that precipitation this week, most of the region will average below normal precipitation. Next week, hardly any change. It's really a somewhat of a quiet type pattern. You can see some areas of green there, which is above normal, some areas of yellow. But really, it's almost impossible to say exactly where that will be uh, two weeks ahead. So really, it's looking like both this week and next week, uh, close to normal, maybe a little bit above or below uh, across the region. Um, I think the trend overall this week will be below normal, um, and it's going to be hard to say exactly where these little bands of above normal will uh, develop. So let's look at temperatures. Temperatures this week, uh, models have it close to normal. I do think it's going to average above normal. I looked at this in a little bit more detail, and until that front comes through, I do think that we're going to have a period of above normal temperatures uh, through Wednesday. And then not much change as we get through the 11th through the 16th. Okay, here are your takeaway points. It looks like it's going to be dry and on the hot side early until that front approaches, and then we'll have some scattered showers and storms the latter part of the week. I think we'll probably have an area that will average above normal, but it'll be close to the coast. I think the rest of the area, even with these showers and storms, is going to average below normal. I really don't see any strong either temperature or precipitation anomalies, either too um, prolonged period of too hot or too dry, too wet or too cold um, for the next couple weeks. I think there will be a couple days here and there, um, but not really a significant uh, prolonged spell. And I know last week I said the uh, tropics would be quiet, thinking that system would stay off the coast, uh, but it does look like I looked at it in detail. I don't really see anything coming in behind Arthur, so uh, it looks like it will be quiet. If I do see anything, I'll give you an update on that. So have a great week, and I will be talking to you again next week.